In this section, what I want to talk to you about is integrating our apps with other CISPRO programs. We know that we can pass a parameter into uh, our application and our app can use the get app parameter uh, call out to get that. We've seen that in our earlier examples. So this lends itself for um, being able to launch an app from within another program, CISPRO program, pass it maybe sales order number or a customer number or a stock code um, and do something and then return back to the CISPRO program. So the first element of this is to discuss different ways of launching um, an app from a CISPRO program. All of this is standard, uh, nothing that none of it is new, but uh, it's, I think it's worth recapping it before we uh, go on and have a look at uh, a worked example. So um, the first example we've got here um, is simply using a form action to launch our program. So this is customer inquiry. And if we right click on one of the fields here, we can see that we can insert a form action. Um, and basically what we have is we've got some text to appear on the action. We've got our program name. And in this case, we are passing uh, the customer key or customer number into our program. Um, and you can just see here the text run var b1, which is which is there. And when we run the program and click on that hyperlink at the bottom of the, the pane, it will launch our um, program, the one that we've been uh, testing um, as we've been going on. And you can see here the customer number has been passed in uh, as a runtime variable. Um, as we saw earlier on. So that's quite a, a, a neat way of doing it. Um, the next uh, way is to use a smart link. Um, now, the way you, we have to do a little bit of EB uh, programming here, um, but basically what we are working towards is if we're editing the macro behind a pane, um, we can pick up a, a field, in this case, a customer one. And what we're basically saying is that we want a, a smart link menu um, I've just given it the same text, run var, B, run var VB1. Um, and then a little bit of uh, uh, code to catch the uh, on menu select item of the customer field. And basically what we're saying here is please run our program and give it the customer number. So the way, what you see there is when you're looking in the customer inquiry, um, you would uh, click on the customer field, you will get your smart link menu appearing. And when you click on that, you'll see our text that we've that we've uh, put up here. And when we click on that, it runs our program. And again, you can see here it's passing the customer number through. And in this instance, it's the full 15 characters of the customer number. So that's uh, another way of doing it. Um, a third way uh, is to use field buttons. Uh, again, we've got to do a little bit of VB scripting in the macro, uh, but uh, here we've chosen the name field. Um, and basically we've said to the name field, please add a button um, called run app. Um, and then we've again, we've got the name field on the on button click event. And it's exactly the same code, run the program and give it the code. And what you'll see here is a button appearing next to the field you've done this for, and you can launch that a, a, and go from there. So there are three different ways of uh, launching a program and passing it parameters. There's a, a fourth one, which is a little bit more complex, which is actually adding a button to a toolbar. And we'll be seeing this in the worked example because I'm going to be doing this in uh, order entry. Uh, but fundamentally, what you do is you right click a toolbar, and go and add a new button to it, give it a name. You can see, see it popping up here. Um, once you've added the button, we right click that and we uh, basically give it the name of a function we want it to run when it is clicked. Just enter that, you know, give it a, a sensible name. Um, and then we go to edit the toolbar macro behind the toolbar and create a function which is actually the same name as the one here. And in this instance, what it's doing is enabling the refresh button on the line um, and then launching my program and passing it the order number. Now we'll see this in the demonstration um, a little bit later on, uh, and we'll have a look at the code of what's happening in that little, that, that little app. And then just really as a final reminder, 
um, and we've covered this in, in previous courses, don't forget that you can add an app to the standard SysPro menu. So basically you go to application designer, there is manage custom applications here. When you select that program, you will get a list of all your apps and you can add them to categories. You can create a new category and add your programs to that category. And once you've saved it and um, closed and reopened uh, SysPro, it will rebuild the menu system. And we can see them in the menu system, there's our test deploy, there's our programs uh, and these apps there and custom applications. So you get the general idea of how you can launch your apps from all over SysPro. So what I'm going to be doing next is talking about interacting with the calling program. What I'd like to do now is discuss with you how we can get our app uh, interacting with the calling program. And the example I'd like to show you is of order entry calling our app, our app doing something, and then returning the data back to uh, order entry. Now, before we go charging off looking at the actual app, let's just discuss what it's going to be doing. We will be adding or have added uh, a button to uh, order entry. Uh, as we saw earlier, a few minutes ago, um, when that button is pressed, it will simply use a SysPro program to run a command to launch our app and pass an order number to it. Um, our app will do a load of logic. Well, we won't do a load of logic, we'll do some logic. Um, and it will use the SOAR TOI business object um, to write lines back into the sales order. Um, and then as the app closes, um, it needs to be able to say to Impo40, I've added new lines to you. Will you please refresh the lines in the sales order? Otherwise, if, I, if, it, if you don't do that, um, you'll have added lines and you can't see them in, in order entry. Now, that last bit is uh, a relatively new uh, idea. Um, it's done by a call out um, called raise an event on a toolbar. And this is the kind of instruction that you do. So we catch this event as we exit the app designer. So as the form is closing, um, it will say, ah, I need to raise a toolbar event. We need the toolbar name and we need the toolbar button uh, ID. Now, um, in effect, what you're doing is the equivalent of pressing the button on the toolbar. And obviously to do that, the button must be enabled. So just be aware of that. Um, the, the, in the user guide, it explains how you identify the toolbar um, name and indeed the button ID. They're very, very straightforward, but it's easier to, for you to look in the user guide. So with that um, said, we will move on to demonstrating it actually in action. So here we are back in App Designer, and what I want to do is just show you um, what our, our app is doing. So it's relatively straightforward. Um, I have a toolbar where um, I can ask for stock code. Um, we've got a save button, which will do whatever processing we need and, and create the sales order lines. Um, and then I've got an edit field here where we will see the order number being passed into the app um, so we can see what's going on. And then we can um, have this stock code and description uh, coming from there. And then we enter a, uh, an order quantity, press the save button, and uh, it will add a line to the sales order. So let's have a quick look at the VB script. Okay, by now you should uh, be familiar with my style. It might be not your style, but we've got some documentation, some text of what's going on. These are our constants for our toolbar, um, some variables to hold some of the data. Um, so uh, on initialization, um, get to using get app parameter, um, which will be passed on the call. I'm saving it into order number, setting stock code and quantity to, to uh, zero, doing a little bit of checking. Um, and if the order number uh, has been passed, then we save the order number into a variable called order number. Remember, we discussed uh, right at the beginning of the course setting variables for the, uh, the app. Um, and then I'm actually putting the uh, order number into the toolbar uh, at the top. OK, so um, once we've got um, we've added our quantity and things like that, and we press the save button, we pick up the relevant data and put them in variables. I like to do this because it makes it 
uh, easier to read VB script a little bit later on. You, you wouldn't want all this added to another uh, call out. It just makes it impossible to read. So move them into variables and away we go. Um, to do a little bit of checking that we've actually entered some data. Um, then call a function called add sales order line, give it the order number, the stock code and the quantity. Um, and hey, presto, um, it should go off and do something. So let's go and have a quick look at this. Um, here's our add sales order line, order number, stock code and quantity coming in. Uh, basically, I am uh, building the XML parameters for, for the business object. There's a function called build sortoy XML param or par, which we'll have a look at in a minute. And we build the document we're passing. We call sortoy, we execute it, do a little bit of error handling um, and then exit and, and everything should be fine, which is great. So let's have a quick look at these other Ones. And this is the, the, the style I like. I like to keep functions uh, short and sweet and doing one thing at a time, passing data backwards and forwards between the functions, easier to maintain, a lot easier to understand. So build Sortoy XML parameters. These are all the parameters that it'll need. I've used code generation up here uh, to call a business object uh, to, to, to generate all this. And the key one here though, and I made a note, is this one here, status in process. Um, you will know that when you're in the middle of sales order entry, um, the sales order is marked as in process. So somebody else can't start editing that order. But of course, if the order is in process and we start trying to add lines to it, it will come back saying mm, the sales order is in process unless that flag is set, in which case it will ignore it and add the lines anyway. Um, so that's relatively straightforward. It builds the parameters and returns it. The uh, XML in is relatively straightforward. It's just simply order header, um, stock line details, and you can see me passing the order number, stock code and quantity in, and it will update the, um, the file. Very, very straightforward. So let's go and have a look at this in operation um, at in uh, Impo 4.0. So as if by magic, here we are in uh, order entry or Impo 4.0. So let's... Um, Go to order maintenance. I've got an order that I've already been testing with, so we'll uh, maintain that. And here we go. Um, so we've just got the one line. Um, here's the button that we added. It's a, it is the button that uh, you saw in the PowerPoint slide. So we will just press this. Up comes our um, app that we've just saw. Here's the order number in our editable thing. Notice that I've disabled that, so you can't actually edit it. Let's uh, add a stock code, good old B100. And let's add uh, two of those and we'll save it. Now I've got a message box giving me the answer to the uh, uh, business object because I just wanted to make sure that it's actually processed it correctly, but it, clearly you might want to remove it for practical purposes. So we'll say okay to that. Um, now notice we've got the one line here at the moment. So now we're going to be exiting here the on exit event will get caught and the refresh button is pressed and the line is done just like that. So you can imagine that you could launch out and do some configuration even and add multiple lines, multiple comments, all sorts of bits and pieces like that. Really quite remarkable. Now, the other thing, of course, um, a, an app will only take a single um, parameter that you pass to it up to something like 200 characters. If you need to pass more than just the order number, then think about passing a string of a pipe delimited parameters. So if for instance, you needed the customer purchase order number, which in this case is one, two, three, and the order number and something else, then you simply pipe delimit it and unpack it when it actually arrives in your VB script and moves things around. So that's how you would tackle that. Um, and that is as simple as that. It's really quite uh, good, isn't it? Um, anyway, I'm, I'm impressed. Um, so that's the end of our course. I'll just do a quick wrap up now um, and we'll be off. Well, just when you thought the course was over, I popped up again. Uh, since I recorded this uh, course, uh, a number of people have asked us, how do we use a standard SysPro program to call an application designer app do some work in it and then have the app return data and update fields in a, the standard SysPro program. Um, and as luck would have it, Doopy had uh, done a perfect example of this on the forum. So I have 
finished his example and we'll just work through it uh, in this section. So basically what we're up to here um, is we will be adding a button um, in the purchase order entry program on the non-stock field, which will call an app. Um, then this app will display some stock codes from a, a data source that we set up. We'll select a stock code and it will insert it into the field. Now, relatively straightforward, but it will illustrate what we've got to do. Now, the call out that we'll be using in the app um, is the form field set value. The key factor here is that it needs the form name um, and then the caption of the field that we'll actually be updating. And that's actually critical to the way uh, this will work. So the steps that we're going to be going through, um, we will be adding a button to our non-stock code field. And basically here we have, we've given it a caption, but in this instance, I picked up the uh, magnifying icon and we can see it on the end of our uh, non-stock code here. And when we press that, um, it will be running a bit of uh, VB script in the macro behind this pane, which basically says, when you click the button on the non-stock code, um, please run an app called POTST1. Um, and whilst we're in doing this, what we need to record is the form name. Well, that's fairly easy because that's just at the top here. And then the caption or the field names um, of the two fields that we're actually updating. And these were non-stock code and description. So we'll need those for later on. We will quickly um, develop uh, an app, or rather I've already done it, and it's, uh, we, we'll have a quick flash through that. Basically, it's asking for a product class. It'll do a query for, for some stock codes. We will double click one of these. Um, and what the double click will do, um, it will come down. It's a list view event. It's We're looking for the double click event. Uh, when that occurs, we are going to get all the row data from the row that we double clicked on and put it into our variable. We then quickly unpack the stock coding description from um, the array uh, columns uh, one and two. Um, and then we will call form field set value. And you can actually see where we're using the form and the field. You can see here the form name and the caption, the form name and the caption, and that's that. Um, now, what we'll move on now and we'll actually start doing our, our bit of a demo. OK, so I'm in my SysPro uh, installation. I have gone into purchase order entry, um, popped in a supplier. So we're now in sort of our live screen environment. First step, uh, make a note of the captions we're interested in. It's these two non hyphen stocked code and description. So I tend to just uh, either take a screenshot of those or just simply jot them down in this case. And we need to add a button onto this one. So we go to field properties. And if we scroll down here, we'll find something for buttons. So we will find run app. Um, I don't know, give it a tool tip, get a stock code. Um, and what we'll do is we will look for an icon. Uh, where is that gone? There it is. Um, and that's all we actually have to do. So if we close that, we will find now that our button is on the end here. Um, we will go and add a little bit of that bit, bit of uh, VB script. So we go to macro um, and this is where we make a note of our macro or our form name. OK, there's our form name here, PO4P10LB. Um, so what we want is to look for events. So we say we're looking for an on button click event. Um, and as luck would have it, because we've only got the one uh, button on here, it's automatically sorted it out. Um, and then if we go into um, code generation, uh, launch a program, um, we want POTST1. And we want to insert the VB script. And it's as simple as that. We'll just tidy those few lines up, I think. So basically what we're saying is when the non-stock code button is clicked, it's going to be running uh, a, a SysPro program called POTST1. Well, that's actually going to be the name of our app. And that's all we've got to do in here. So there we go. 
Okay, so I'm back in App Designer. I have uh, created our app. Um, I think by now uh, you're all familiar with uh, uh, how to create an app, but we'll just quickly skip through a few bits and pieces. Here, are, here is our toolbox. We've got our standard file exit stuff, which uh, conforms to the Cisco standard. I bobbed in a, an editable combo box here for the product class, and because we're using a caption that it recognizes, it's popped up the browser as well. Um, if we just click on this, um, we will see that we've got an event ID here. So the, that's what's going on there. Um, we were we have a list uh, view here, which has got stock code and description in, and we're going to populate that through a data source. So let's have a quick look at the data source. Um, it's a custom data source, which means I'm going to be using um, Transact SQL to or the SQL to to do a query. There's our connection string. Um, it's going to be a list format. And if I test the SQL, um, I'm just typing in a, a product class because it needs a product class in there. We see that it's returning our query, and this, these are the rows of the list views that we actually want. Okay, so that's very, very straightforward. The, the SQL statement is, is this. Um, so it's just a very, very straightforward stock code description from the master, so inventory master, um, and then passing a key, which is the product class, and we're ordering by stock code. So very, very simple stuff. So that's that. Um, so what we do with, we'll just come out of there, with our um, list view, um, here we will go down to the binding area. So what we're saying is we're binding the data to a custom data source. Um, that's the name of the data source. Excuse my spelling, but there we go. Um, we've added the columns already. The primary node was that repeating node, which was the, the element row. So that's already gone in there. And when do we want to refresh this list view? Well, we want it on a toolbar execute event. And it's actually when the product class changes. So basically, when we change the product class, it will execute the data source and populate the list view. Very, very simple stuff. So if we have a look at our, our VB script. OK, so here we are now. We've got an on user event, which you're all familiar with. Our event type is a list view event because that's what we're trying to trap. And uh, the um, the actual event that we're trying to trap is when a list row has been double clicked. Um, and when a list row has been double clicked, we're going to get the whole row, pop it into return value. We will unpack the row into an array and we are picking up um, the stock code and description from uh, elements one and two. Fair enough. Then we are doing form field set value um, twice. We're doing it uh, on the poor P10L8 um, form, um, and there's the caption. So the way that this is working is as the standard program launches the app, uh, Cispro understands that now we've got two programs running together and they can talk to each other. So the app becomes aware um, that there is another form around called poor P10L8. So there we go. And then we will close the app. So relatively straightforward stuff. So let's go and see how that's actually going to work. So here we are back in the purchase order entry. I have added a supplier. The screens are live in effect. So I've clicked on stock code, non-stock code. Here's our button from before. So we will press that. Up comes POTST1, which is great. And it's asking us for a product class. So we will tap in BA in there tab. Um, our SQL query has executed because that's what we told it to do, populated it. We'll double click, say, A200 and see it's popped. To, if you remember the code, it after the double click, it took the row, unpacked it, wrote back to non-stock to description and closed the app. And it's as simple as that. Um, and you can put as many and update as many uh, fields as you uh, like on that. So what I'm going to do is one other th uh, thing to talk about um, just to complete this area, but hopefully that gives you uh, food for thought. The final bit of the jigsaw that I want to explain to you is the controlling of the toolbar buttons on the standard program that calls the app. Now, 
you'd have thought, well, why do I need to control those? But um, if you imagine what happens in, in an application, say we took take some like inventory maintenance, you key in a, a stock code, you will then uh, put a cursor in a field and start to type. And as soon as you start to type, Cisco says, aha, something's changed. Therefore, I will enable the um, save button. If, however, you typed in the B100 as an example and didn't type anything in, but simply pressed a button to say, call my app, you do your typing in your app and then you exit and then you take your data from the app and put it back into the standard program. The screen is updated, but nothing has told SysPro that uh, any data has changed. So what we need is a mechanism to be able to come out of our app um, and tell it, tell the standard program, please enable the save button. So what we uh, do for that um, is we can use uh, this, the um, system variables at the toolbar button and you can uh, enable and disable and set all sorts of characteristics of any toolbar button in any form or program within Cispro. So I think the simplest thing to do would be to simply just go through a demo, show you it, uh, show you the symptom, show you the solution, um, and then you should be good to go. So I'm going to use uh, stock code maintenance as a relatively simple example. Um, here we are in the program and I've already keyed in my stock code B100. Uh, and you'll see that the save button uh, is disabled. So if I say come down to something like the drawing number here and type, as soon as I type something, notice that the um, save button is enabled. And that's what I was talking about earlier on. So now if I decide to move on and stuff like that, I can just save it and we're, we're good to go. If however, what we do is we won't save that, but we'll start again. And I decide to simply run my app. So I've not typed in anything. I will, maybe we've got an app that picks up drawing numbers from somewhere, but I'll just put anti one in there or something like that. Um, and we will update the drawing. Now you can see that the drawing number is updated here. I'll close my app and I've still got it not saved. So we need a mechanism of being able to uh, sort that out. Now, anywhere in Cispro, this is nothing to do with that designer. Um, you can control um, how the buttons look, whether enabled or disabled and so on like that. And to do that, you generate an XML string and then just use VBScript to chuck it at the, um, at the form. And we need to generate that. So easiest way of doing it is whilst we're still in PST, um, we will simply go to uh, the macro. Okay, I'm just going to just come clear of any of our functions we've already got. So we will go into code generation. We want to go to customize toolbars. And we're now presented with, um, I just sort this out for you, um, a form which actually um, displays all the buttons on all the um, toolbars. And the one that we actually want is this one. And you can see that we can enable, we can control the visibility, whether it's checked or not, whether it's pressed or not, set a value to it. What we're after is on the save button, we want to enable it. OK, and when we've finished messing around with this, um, we say insert VB script. If at the same time we wanted to do any other button, then we can do. You just simply set it. And then when we say insert VB script, it generates the script. Uh, if there was more than one toolbar uh, button being uh, generated, it would generate more than one line in this, this XML string. Now we've got um, the correct syntax of what we actually want. Notice that we've got the form name. Um, we've also got the button event ID. Um, we are setting it to true. The caption is just simply for documentation purposes, just so that we can see that it's actually the save button. At this point, what we want to do now is we want to copy that and we want to save it away. So we'll put it in notepad and put it away. And then we'll just delete that because we don't need it. This is just simply to generate the right syntax. Save that. And we will come out of 
this sample. What we'll do now is go into the app designer. We'll select our test. Now, what we want to do is after we've updated the drawing number, um, we want to enable the save button. Now, if, for instance, we decided to go into variables here and we scroll down to toolbar button and we double click that, it generates the right um, variable, but it has no idea what you, what you want to do or indeed what button or toolbar you're talking about. So there's no way of generating the right code. So if we come here and pick up the code that we generated earlier on, and we simply pop it in there, it's now got the right syntax. So what I would expect now is that once it's updated, it will um, update the button. So we will save that and we will close. I'll go back into stock code maintenance. Type in our B100. We run our app. Type in ND1 in there. Update the drawing. There it is. And notice now the uh, save button's enabled. So we could exit our app and continue. And at any stage, just press save, job done. Um, so that's just the final bit of making sure that you get the UI working properly for your customers. Good, excellent. Well, that's the end of that little bit. Um, and we just move on to a wrap up now. Well, that's the end of our course. Um, we've discussed quite a lot of things really. Uh, and I believe quite fundamental things are understanding variables, their persistence, uh, passing data around your your app and through to CISPRO and things like that. Um, I hope that it gives you food for thought and enables you to design some really good uh, apps as you go along. Thanks for listening um, and hopefully we'll catch up with you in another course. Take care. Bye.